The Manchester Community Food Cupboard is one of several of the area's food suppliers that's seen demand for its services increase sharply over the past weeks as people have been laid off from work and are struggling to make ends meet. Based at the Manchester Town Hall building, the food cupboard is a busy place on the days when it's open, which are Wednesday from 2 to 4 p.m., Thursday from 10 to 12 noon, and 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. It's also open the last Saturday of each month from 10 to 12 noon. Pre-pandemic, patrons would enter through the main hallway of the town office building, but now, with social distancing rules in place, it's a drive-up situation. Orders for food are placed outside and sent into the food cupboard storage area, which has expanded to meet increased demand. The adjacent Kilburn meeting room, where town boards typically meet, has been pressed into service as another storage area where volunteers fill the orders. Once filled, the boxes of food are brought out to the waiting customers and are sent on their way. Martha Carey, the executive director of the food cupboard, on the right, and Deb Moser, on the left, and the president of the food cupboard's board of directors, explain how it all works. They've gone from serving about 120 families a week to more than 190, they said. Every week we seem to be getting more new clients. I think, in fact, today, this morning we were open, we served with 30 or 40 people, and um, what do we have, four new clients? It's, it's been good. We're, we have more uh, deliveries going out, so I think as we go forward, we'll probably need a few more people to help us do that, but right now we're holding steady. And getting the food has not been a problem either so far? Also, so far, so good. We've gotten a lot of support from the Vermont Food Bank. Um, they were here just yesterday morning with a giant truck full of items. Um, so yeah, so, so far so good. Okay. We did see a little bit of a pinch this weekend when we had to do some stuff, get some deliveries out, and the timing was off of when the delivery was coming from the food bank. And then again, we had volunteers who offered to do a big Walmart shop, and that was terrific. So we've been able to manage so far. I, mean, we're, I think we're anxious about not having enough, and so it kind of ebbs and flows and we, Martha does all the ordering and feels like we're in great shape and then we'll get a rush and the food will get low and we'll get anxious. But so far in the month, months, it's been okay. I had an enormous outpouring of love and support from the community, so that has been terrific and that has really helped us to keep up. So hopefully uh, as long as that support continues, we'll be able to keep up with it for as long as this lasts because I think it's going to be a while before things get back to normal here. Yes, our lovely new addition we were hoping to have a grand opening for. And so who do we need to thank? We need to thank Dave Cornell, who uh, donated his time. R.K. Miles, who donated a lot of the, uh, the, the infrastructure. We had some anonymous donations, monetary donations. We had the Vermont Community Foundation. Um, Kara. And, and Kara Boshart, who kind of spearheaded the whole thing from um, their, their families in the construction business. It's, um, I don't know the name of the construction company. We, the, all this shed and this front were donated to us and we didn't spend 10 cents of our out of our checking account. It was all donated, everything. So we are so thankful to the people who made it possible because it has really made all the difference in us being able to do what we've been doing lately because yeah. We've been able to use this space as an emergency food shelter for the weekends when we're not here. So if anybody really needs a hand, they can just call or text us and we'll give them the code and they can come in and help themselves. Um, so that has been great. And the, the shed here has been helping us with some of the excess stuff that the food bank has been bringing. It's giving us a nice dry place to store things until we give them out. So we're, we're very grateful for both. So we also would say anybody that needs food, please don't feel funny about coming here, right? I mean, this yeah, is yeah, yeah. we we want this is what we're here for. We're here for people who may have never gone and used any services like this before. So come because we have food, and this is what this is. A, it's fine to do that. So we just want everyone to know you can come and and get food here. Yeah. The community food cupboard has been in operation since June of 1990. They get their food supplies through the Vermont Food Bank which secures large quantities of food from grocery stores, food manufacturers, farms, businesses, restaurants, individuals, and Feeding America, the national network of food banks. 
Their food is then distributed statewide to their network partners, like the community food cupboard. We had a chance to talk with John Sales, the CEO of the Vermont Food Bank. The Labor Department is saying it's between 20 and 23 percent unemployment in Vermont, and uh, food insecurity is financial insecurity. So, so seeing the the increase in unemployment and people are really, I think, concerned. Um, even if their pantry is not empty now, um, that what's what what does the future hold? There's so much uncertainty. Um, so we've seen between, depending on the, the place, between a 30 and 100% increase in the number of people showing up at food shelves and meal sites and our Veggie Van Gogh distributions all over the state. That's not to mention the, uh, the National Guard MRE distributions that are happening. Um, and, and do you feel comfortable and confident that you'll be able to continue to obtain the necessary food supplies uh, truck drivers and, and be able to deliver the, the produce around the state uh, to meet that demand? Well, that's, that's a really good question. Um, and also there, there are some question marks there. Uh, so far, so good. Um, we have been able to continue to bring food in, um, you know, not enough to meet all the need. And that's why we've enlisted the National Guard and the state. Um, and that's been a huge, huge help. We, we can't get in the, the quantities that we really need fast enough. Um, but food is coming in and, and we are getting it out. So, so far our, our um, supply chain is, is holding up. Um, you know, our drivers are, are getting tired. <laughs> they're, they're driving much heavier loads, much more often, um, but they're also really resolute. So, you know, it's, it's great to, to talk to them and they're really proud to come to work every day and be um, supplying those you know, 215 partners, the food shelves and meal sites all over the state and also going to the schools and hospitals and doing our, our Veggie Van Gogh distributions. Um, so you know, we'll see what the future brings. I'm, I suspect that things are gonna get worse before they get better. Um, Luckily, as the food bank, we have a lot of friends and a lot of people that want to help. So, so there is, um, there, there, are, there are resources out there and there are people that we can tap on the shoulder if we need some extra trucks and drivers or our volunteers. You'll have a chance to hear the full interview with Mr. Sales in a separate program where we also looked at food issues in Vermont and how they've been influenced by the coronavirus pandemic, along with Phil Morin, who is the food security and advocacy manager for Hunger Free Vermont. Next week, we'll also take a look at the Arlington Food Shelf and check in on how they're doing to help their people during the COVID-19 pandemic. Meanwhile, for the GNAT TV News Project, I'm Andrew McKeever.